About 10 years ago, I'm coming home as a single father with my two girls, eight and nine years old, and I have a thing called man's disease. Anybody know what that is? Where you have to take everything out of the car in one trip? You don't want to go back, so I'm loaded up with the groceries. I've got something under my arm, toilet paper here, and I'm getting into the house. And my daughter, who's eight years old, Shannon, is getting her school bag out of the trunk. And it's a Volvo that I have, and it has hydraulics on it, so she's trying to close the trunk. And she says to me, Daddy, I can't. And I'm like this with everything. Phone's ringing in my pocket. I'm tired. I have to pee. I'm looking at her. I'm like, come on, honey, you could do it. And she said, but it is hard, Daddy, I can't. And I say to her, what does Daddy say? If you can't, you, help me. If you can't, you, that's right. If you can't, you must. She said, but Daddy, it is hard, I can't. I said, think, sweetheart, think. And I'm like, think, think. You can do it. She looks over at her nine-year-old sister. And she goes, Monica, get the other side. And I watch my two girls pull, like this is an event of their life, slowly pulling it down against the hydraulics, and then boom! And what do I see? But this face light up. She goes, I did it, Daddy, I did it! And I looked at her, and I knew that that was a moment that would change her life forever. Because in life, when you do what is difficult, life will be easy. But if you keep on trying to do what is easy, life will be difficult. Now this girl is 18 years old today. At the age of 17, after skipping a year in high school and finishing college at the age of 17, she walked into my office and she said, Dad, I'm going to New York City. And I said, uh, honey, you're 17 years old. She goes, yeah, I'm going to New York City and I'm going to become a supermodel for Victoria's Secret. And I went, really? And she goes, yes. But I want $400 a month for you because I've done my budget and that's what I need. You guys are going to think I'm crazy. I said, okay. She got on a bus 11 hours, drove down, went down to New York City. She had arranged to work for somebody to take care of their dogs, walk their dogs, and to feed uh, their, 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 their plants. And after 250 additions, she got signed to an international firm and now has her visa paid for, her apartment paid for, spending cash, and they're going to make her a star. In life, if you are looking for what is easy, you will spend the rest of your life living in pain and in difficulty. But if you do what is difficult, the things that scream at you, the pain, the, the, the agony, the, the, the things that go, no, it's gonna, it's, I'm afraid of it, you'll spend the rest of your life in difficulty. Does that make sense to anybody in here? Yes. All right. Well, welcome to Wealth Creation. My name is Rock Thomas, and I'm going to talk to you about how to make things happen in your life no matter what. I'm going to hopefully leave you with a couple of secrets or clues, and some of them maybe you've heard before. But I want to caution you against the three most dangerous words in the English language. I know that. Okay? I know that. So we're going to talk about some things you might have heard before, but if you're not doing them, then it's just an idea or a concept. And I'm going to challenge you to leave here today doing some of the things that we're going to talk about. Now, you've heard this before maybe, that 80% of success is just showing up. Yes? So who showed up? You did. So I want to congratulate you all, but I can't reach you. So just reach around to the person beside you, pat them on the back, and go, congratulations for being here. <laughs> all right, great job. Now, anytime I do a training, I have a couple of rules. One of them is don't believe a word I say. Why would I suggest that? Once there was a woman in the front row, she goes, well, because you're a man. <laughs> okay, but aside from that, whose experience can I come from? 
yeah, my own experience, right? It doesn't make it right or wrong or true or false, it just makes it my experience. But I can tell you this, the strategies and tools I'm gonna to share with you today have transformed thousands of lives. And it's not because I made them up, I'm more like, I'm like a, a Google search engine looking for what works and what doesn't work. How many of you would agree that there's a difference between the way successful pe people behave and the way struggling people behave, yes? So it's a matter of just discerning what they're doing and then modeling them and making that a habit. So we're going to talk a little bit about that. But in order for that to be effective in your life, I need you for you to ignore that word, I've heard that before or I know that, and to say to yourself, I'm going to go into a state of curiosity and you're going to be open. So how many of you are willing to be open? Anybody not? We'll see. As far as rule number two is concerned, help me out. How do you get the most of an, out of an event like this? Participate. You guys are, you guys have been around before, yes? What is your name? Garth. Garth? Yes. Garth said participate. Please give Garth a round of applause. Good job, Garth. So that is awesome. That is a lovely, polite golf clap. But we here are awesome wealth builders, so we're going to try that one more time at a higher level. Please give Garth a round of applause. Now that's what I'm talking about, right there. How many of you agree with me that energy is everything? Yes? And successful people have energy, right? So would it be okay if we, for the next little while, maybe even for the whole day, that we have amazing energy? How many of you are willing to, to, to play at, say, 100%? Yes? yes? Let me hear you, 100%. Okay, awesome. Now, some of you high C's and high S's are going, oh no, not this kind of a thing. Are you kidding me? I just leave me alone. I want to absorb the information. I'm cool, right? And I get that. But I'm going to tell you this. When fear comes along, energy is your friend. Energy is your friend, right? I'll tell you a quick little story. When I was 17 years old, you know, 17 year old, you're a guy, you got a lot of things on your mind, but I'm walking by a tennis court and there's this, there's this really beautiful girl. And I'm thinking to myself, that could lead to pleasure. <laughs> and then my brain went, but it could also lead to pain. Because fear is really a tool. Fear is a call to action. It's like if you touch a hot stove and, and you burn yourself, you run over to your operations manual and you write down hot stove equals pain, yes? And you have two major recordings in your manual, pain and pleasure. And for the rest of your life, what you try to do is you record them so that you don't have any more pain because your mind is like a, it's like a sentry looking for ways to protect you. True or true? Oh, come on, guys. True or true? True. Thank you. So there I am walking toward this girl and I'm thinking, Pleasure, pleasure, my brain's going, no pain, pain. Careful, there's two people standing beside her. And if you ask her out and she says no, you're going to be humiliated. Remember in the operations manual, humiliation and embarrassment equals pain. Careful. But I also remember reading something because successful people read from others that are successful. And I had read this thing when I was just a, a young teenager. It said, do what you fear and it will disappear. Do what you fear and it will disappear, which means take action, right? But we always have fear in our way because fear is protecting us. So we have to have the ability to gauge it, to understand if it's useful. If you see a train coming, coming and you're about to walk on the track and stand there and your brain goes, fear, pain about to come, you might want to heed that one. I'll give you another example. How many of you have had this? You're driving along, minding your own business, and in your rear view mirror, you see a red flashing light. Has anybody had their heart rate increase because of that? <laughs> Why? You didn't do anything wrong. But maybe there was a day when you were doing that and you got pulled over and you maybe had a burnt out light bulb or you didn't have your driver's license and you got a ticket. Yes or yes? Absolutely, it's happened to me. So now your body has written, right? Your mind's written in the operations manual. You're just minding your own business, having a good time, driving along. You just, you're just doing your thing and then wham, pain. So now you're afraid. Does that make sense? You're afraid of just anything because you don't know. And if you have parents 
or relatives that are in the habit of saying, careful, watch out, you might fall. Don't, oh, you're not going to do that investment, are you? Oh, you're going to go out and work on your... No. Oh, uh, uh. Before you know it, you have very few options left that you want to say yes to without being held back. So you wrote in your operations manual that that meant pain or potential pain, and then going forward, you have to overcome that all the time. Fear is really your friend, it's really a tool, but you have to learn how to manage it. So there I am walking along toward her, and I probably looked like I had some kind of a problem because I think at one step was like pleasure, the other one was pain, right? And I don't know what I'm gonna say because I have part of my personality growing up with loving brothers and sisters that told me that I was an idiot, right? That I don't know how to communicate well. So I'm walking toward her and I'm like, I don't even know what I'm gonna say. But I know that if I visualize the, on the end result of what I want, that maybe I could figure it out. And I walk right up to her and I get there and I don't know what I'm gonna say and I look at her and I go, Bond. James Bond. <laughs> and that's the exact reaction she had. She cracks up. And I think she cracked up because she realized I was really pretty much an idiot, but she appreciated my courage. Does that make sense? Turn to somebody, give him a high five, and say, he's finally making sense. <laughs> I soon then learned, as I did get her to come on a date, we did become girlfriend and boyfriend for a couple of months, I wrote in my operations manual that when I do things that I fear, I have some pleasure. Does it make sense? So I started to create now an operations manual that empowered me. What's the word, please? Oh, come on, because I can't hear you. Thank you. That empowered me. And that's really the key. Because as you record things, the past will e equal the future because that's what you have as a reference guide. Does that make sense? So the operations manual is going to determine your life. So as I went forward, I started to realize that I had to train myself to take massive action. So while we're together, it'll be okay if I tell you a little bit about myself? Yeah. Thank you. So I started in real estate in 1990. I had been in the airlines and I'd lost my job because my father was sick with, uh, with colon cancer and I took some time off to take care of him. I was also going through a divorce at the time and of course I decided that would be a great time to get into real estate. Um, you know what they say is you're either motivated by, um, by inspiration or by desperation, right? And I guess for me, it was initially inspiration, but it soon morphed into desperation. And what happened is, is I was really not good as a realtor. I was um, not coachable. I tried to do everything on my, own, on my own. I was what you would call a secret agent, right? Hiding in the background waiting to be successful so I could go into the office and write four or five sales on the board so that I was good enough so that people could look at me and go, oh, he's awesome. But inside, this little voice inside of me said, I'm, I, I'm not worthy of it. So I was hiding, trying to figure out a way to be successful so that I didn't have to show up at the meetings and be the one guy that didn't have any sales. After nine months of really getting nowhere, and then getting evicted from my apartment at the age of 30, moving back in my mother, with my mother, I realized that um, desperation was setting in. I managed to scrape up enough money to buy some CDs from a small guy called Tony Robbins. Anybody heard of Tony Robbins? Yeah. All right. So I put them in my car and I just drove around and listened to them all the time. And I found my, my, my focus changing and things changing. And then I hired somebody to help me with some of the strategies with real estate. And the very next year, I sold 32 homes. Became the number one agent. Went on to sell 100 homes a year in four years. And then what you guys call states down here in Canada, we call them provinces. I come from, from Montreal, Canada. And I bought the largest real estate company in the province of Quebec. At the time, was big. Now it's very small. 94 agents, three offices. And even though I didn't know how I was going to do it, because I didn't have the money yet. I was just overcoming debt from my, my father who had passed away with debt with the government. Um, my boss walked into my office and he said, Rock, I want to sell you the company. Do you want to buy it? And I went, yes. How am I going to do this? Right? 
I had to deed over $200,000 with the sales I hadn't made yet. I had to take the, the broker's course in French, a second language for me. I had three children under the age of four. I had just moved into a home. I had to sell my house, move into a rental. It was actually the rental that I had with my ex-wife and my new wife moved in with me. God bless her. <laughs> and I'll tell you this, is that how you do things in life is none of your frickin' business. All you need to know is why. How is none of your frickin' business. And the more you get that into your mind, you don't need to know how. That little treadmill inside saying, well, I don't know how I'm going to do this. You need to let that go as soon as you possibly can. But if you know that you want to live a legendary life, you want to make changes in your life, you want to stand for something, you have a reason to impact people's lives, you want to be able to travel and have the great lifestyle that you want, that's all you need to know. And that's all I knew, is that this was a quantum leap. It was a gut feeling. Can I do this? Should I do this? And the answer inside was yes. It was yes. God, you know what? If I knew what I had to do, I would have absolutely said no. Absolutely. They said, these are all the things you're going to have to do. I'm like, oh. right? But I was like, I was never more alive in my life. Got up. I had, to, I had to learn a new language. I was challenged by the brokers in my office. But within four years, I took it from 94 agents to 270 agents, broke every record that there was set in, the, in, that, in that period of time in our area. Then I sold it 10 years later for 10 times what I bought it for, wrote a book, traveled around North America speaking and training. And in spite of all the things that happened, during that period of time, I moved nine times. I've been divorced a few times. <laughs> if you need any advice on that, I'm very good on it. <laughs> You know, I've cut my net worth twice, but still growing. There's been adversity, you know, in, in, in the economy, in the area of the world that I live in. I had my nephew pass away to a heroin overdose. I buried my father. I had a third of my thyroid gland removed. In 2003, I lost all my hair to a disease called alopecia. Life happens, yes? yes. And adversity is going to happen. But if you approach it in a way that shapes your life, that you decide that everything happens for me, but not to me, then you become stronger. The problem is our society spends a lot of time playing the victim, right? The economy, the competition, the, the, the ex-wife would be a great story for me, or the ex-wives, right? The payments, whatever. Those are all great stories. Here's what I say to people when I coach them. You can have a great story, or you can be a great story. Make your choice, right? So I want to share with you a couple of lessons that worked for me, that I learned from my mentors, that empowered me and shaped my life. And the first one is this. And somebody quote, put a, a thing on Facebook the other day, and they said, what's, um, what's the most important lesson or, or, or quote that you ever heard? And for me, this is one of the most important ones. Read it out loud with me, please. Nothing has but the meaning you give it. So what does that mean? What does that mean? Nothing has meaning but the meaning you give it. So I, I lose all my hair to alopecia. What probably happened is that I was going through my second divorce, and I decided at the same time to run a marathon without being prepared and then go on a seven-day cleanse. Probably not a good combination, right? After the seven-day cleanse, hair started to fall out of my head, and I started to feel like maybe I was getting cancer or different things. I started to question myself. Is questioning yourself a good thing? It is if they're empowering questions. If there is, why is this happening to me? Not so good. Am I dying of cancer? Not so good, right? So I started to ask the, the bad questions until I realized what I was doing. However, remember that fear is a tool. So fear said, are you dying? It caused me to take some action. The action was to go see a doctor, to investigate online, and then I soon discovered what alopecia was. And it's just a disease that attacks the follicles of your hair. And it has no other Ill, Ill, Ill effects. Happens to about 23% of the population. So I'm like, okay, cool. Now how do I reframe myself here and, and really get strong with this? So jot this down, if, if you will. W-G-A-T. W-G-A-T. It stands for, what's great about this?
So help me out. What's great about losing all your hair? First of all, I like the first one, nothing, because that's what your brain's going to say. You lose a deal, you have a car accident, and you're going to go, well, Rock Thomas says, what's great about this? Ask you something, you know, fucking nothing great about my having an accident. <laughs> this guy's a jerk, right? Your brain will do that. But you need to be stronger. You need to push through and go, what could be great about this? So what could be great about losing all my hair? And I thought, I don't have to buy any more shampoo. <laughs> Never have a bad hair day, right? I get ready quicker, and I start to find the answers. Are the answers there? Yeah. They're always there. You just have to look a little bit harder. So check this out. I have a really cool Greek friend, and he has lots of hair all over his body. <laughs> he pays money and goes through pain to have what I have. Because I have no hair anywhere on my body. Tell you what, I go get a massage, they go, man, this is pretty cool stuff. No hair, right? So what's great about this is always available. In fact, I'd made a little thing with myself and I said, you know, I can get a massage once a, once a month in exchange for the money that I would have spent getting my hair cut and the shampoo and everything. So now every time I go get a massage, I'm like, yippee ki yay alopecia, you go, <laughs> right? Nothing has meaning but the meaning you give it. So I want you to think or to write down on your notes of something you've given a negative meaning to that you could turn around. You're too short, you're too tall, you're too skinny, you're too fat, you don't speak two languages. Your parents sucked, right? You don't have any parents. Something you're going to turn around, something you're going to give an empowering meaning, like alopecia is awesome, right? What is it in your life that you've given a negative meaning to? just because it showed up for you that way, or somebody even suggested it to you, you know? Oh, you're so shy. Be quiet, you're shy. Somebody suggested that to you, you bought it, you wrote it down in your operations manual, and you thought that's who you are. How many of you have had that where so, you, you or somebody you know goes, oh, that's just the way I am. Oh, I would never do that, right? Were they born that way? Were you born shy? Were you born, you know, Timid or, or lazy? Hell no, I don't think so. Laziness is just fear. And by the way, you overachievers, most of you in this room, you don't have any fear most of the part. You guys use a code word. It's called I'm stressed. <laughs> you see people walking around the office, oh yeah, man, I'm really fearful. I'm afraid the deal's not going to go through and I'm not going to finish number one in my office or in the top ten, I'm really afraid. No, you go, I'm stressed, man. You have no idea what's going on in my life. I got all this stuff going on in my life, and I can't make this deal. Now get out of the way. I need that computer. Nothing is meaning but the meaning that you give it. I say empower yourself and start giving yourself empowering meaning. Does that make sense? Yes. Turn to somebody and tell them the one thing you're going to turn around. Go ahead. Tell them the one thing you're going to turn around, the new meaning you're going to give it. Begin finishing up, thank your partner, give him a high five and say you're awesome. All right, I have a little game for you. I have a little game for you, let's try this. I'm gonna yell out a word and you're gonna say pain or pleasure. Say it loud enough so at least your neighbor can hear you, okay? Ice cream. Pleasure. Salad. Pleasure. Public speaking. Farting out loud. <laughs> Who wrote this? No, it was a time when farting out loud, you're a 15-year-old kid, that's, that's cool, right? And probably when I'm 60, it'll be cool again. All right, um, time blocking. Doing a business plan. 
So isn't it interesting that for some people pleasure, some people pain? At the end of today, I'm going to leave you with what I believe are the things that whether you uh, associate pain or pleasure to them, by doing them, you will get massive results. Does that make sense? So most successful people, do they do a business plan? Yes. Right? Even if it's painful, do they do it? Yes. So what's the skill? We're going to find out some of them. What's the skill they need? They need to have the ability to convince themselves that the short-term pain is worth the long-term what? That's it, right? It's like working out, exercise, pain or pleasure. For some people, not exercising out, right, is pain. True or true? For some people, exercising and sweating and, and it just it's pain. But if you want to live a long and strong life, if you could get yourself to the point where you make that habit of exercising, how many of you would agree that's probably pretty good? Yes? Right. So you know what to do, but in many cases, you don't do what you know. Why is that? What stops you? Excuses, yes. And the big word is fear, right? So why wouldn't you work out? Well, maybe you don't have enough time, or maybe you don't know how to work out, or maybe last time you worked out you injured yourself, or maybe you got embarrassed, somebody laughed at you because you didn't know how to do something. So it's only fear that stops you from doing it. So we want to override that fear and say, what's going to serve me at the highest level? Will working out serve me, right? So I'm part of a group of guys that are a mastermind group, and for about probably 50 years of my life, I'm 52, I've, well, that's, that's an example. For me, for the last 25 years, I've thought meditating would be really good for me, right? And I've heard it all the time, and I'm type A, go, 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 and meditating would be really great. And every time I try it, I'd be one minute into it, and I'm like, I got things to do. Right? This is useless. And I'd go on to do something else. But sure enough, you know, a few weeks ago we got all together and we had the right person say it the right way. And now it's been 21, 20 days, tomorrow will be 21, that I've meditated for 20 minutes every morning. Now, has it been a challenge? Yes or no? Absolutely. Have there been times when I've gone, I don't have the? Absolutely. But I was committed to it. And more importantly, there's three things that you have to do if you want to make a change that lasts. Jot this down. Number one, change your environment. Change your environment. Why is environment so, so powerful? Because as humans, we love to connect. We want to be part of something. We want to be loved and appreciated. So if the option is to be part of this group or to be connected or to do something different, most of the time we go for the connection. If you're with people that are like-minded and people that have similar goals to you, then it's effortless. So some of your best friends that you do the things you do with that make you happy and comfortable, whatever it is, whether it's drinking beer or you know watching TV, whatever it is, you're comfortable and you do it effortlessly, yes? So you just have to check in. If you're going to the office every morning and you got four guys that are time blocking from 9 to 11 and they're doing their prospecting and you all go in and do that and you're all committed to doing that, it's going to become easy and your new natural. True or true? True. So you want to surround yourself with people that are doing the things that are going to serve you to get the goals that you want. That's it. Not more complicated than that. But most of the time, you're not surrounded by people that have the standards that you want to strive toward. So you have to seek those people out. And some of you are going to have to leave some people behind. I'm sorry to say it. If you want to live the legendary life, you're going to leave some people behind. That's it. Don't have all day to get into that. That's just the way it is. Number two is I want to encourage you to have a sense of curiosity. Be open. Ask questions. Look for people that have the experiences you want and ask them how they're doing it. How did you commit to do 20 minutes? Talk to the people that are doing the meditation. Get in their brain and it'll be easier for you. And number three is you have to get leverage on yourself. And that's the whole why piece. Don't try to figure out how you're going to do the meditation. Why am I going to do the meditation? Why? Well, first of all, I don't want to let my buddies down because we committed to it. So we all text each other after we're done. That's number one. Number two is I'm a, word of my ma I'm a man of my word. So if I say I'm going to do something, then I'm going to freaking do it. So that's leverage on myself. Does that make sense? Turn to somebody, give him a high five, and say he's still making sense. And you want to start focusing on your vision. Now I'm going to 
jump to this next piece, and you've heard this before, and you've seen it before. What you focus on expands. Say that with me, please. What you focus on expands. When I was very young, I had a lot of acne, and my brothers and sisters said, pizza face. And the more I focused on it, the worse I felt about myself. So I'd go to the mirror, see the acne, feel bad, tell my mom I was sick, not go to school. My brain searched for a solution to avoid the pain and discovered that sun tanning reduced the, the, the acne, and I decided to move to Australia. No joke. Moved to Australia to be in the sun all the time. Problem is I brought me with me, and I brought my identity with me. So even though I covered up and felt better in the moments, every day I lived in fear, every single day that I'm not enough, that somebody's not gonna like me, they're gonna, God forbid, they call me pizza face, and I live with that fear. Until I learned that what you focus on expands and that I could rewrite my operations manual. I could do what? Rewrite. Yeah, I could rewrite it, imagine. I came to a conclusion that somebody offered me, my brother, who was jealous of me, for whatever reason, tried to bring me down by giving me that identity, and I bought it. I took it on. He offered it, I bought it. He could have also said I'm a stud. I would have liked that, but it didn't work out that way. So when I found out that technology, I started to look for an empowering identity. And my coach said to me, who's somebody you admire? And I said, well, I like Clint Eastwood. How many of you think Clint Eastwood was pretty cool, yes? And back in my day, when I was a little younger, you know, he was, he was kind of like, you know, he was handsome. So I went from pizza face to ruggedly handsome. <laughs> and then what I did is I just kept on saying to myself, you're ruggedly handsome, you're ruggedly handsome. Yeah, you've got some scars on your face from, from, from your acne, but that's, that's, you're a man and you're ruggedly handsome. And chicks do, you know, they, they dig that. You've been somewhere, you've done something with your life. And I started to change my identity and feel more what? More confident. And then I was able to go out and do things in my life and not hide in my room. A simple change of what I focused on. So quickly, think or jot down one piece of your identity, something you say about yourself that isn't empowering. Go ahead, jot that down, and then jot down the antithesis, the opposite, what it could be. What could it be? A part of you that isn't serving you. I'm not a top producer. Whatever it is. I don't like prospecting. It could be anything. I'm a prospecting machine. Turn it around. Successful people do things quickly. Quickly whisper in the ear of the person beside you what it is that you're turning around. Go ahead, do that. Thank him, give him a high five and say, you're awesome. All right, everybody say yes. Yes. Say yes. Yes. Say yes. Yes. Give somebody a high five and say, figure it out later. Your brain will say no automatically right away to protect you. But your ability to say yes and to take action is what's gonna change your life. When I was offered the opportunity to buy my company, I said yes before my brain could say no. I ended up having to do a whole bunch of things that if had I known, had I consciously tried to figure out the how, it would have blocked me, right? So your ability to say yes first is a practice, it's a habit. There's people all over the place that have gotten the habit of saying yes to opportunity and they're better off. Now, I'm not saying don't you know, evaluate it. Somebody said jump off the side of the building. Yes, you're not gonna do it. But I'm saying that you're more prone to say no than you are to say yes. So what if you start getting in the habit of saying yes? Just saying yes to things. You think way too much. One of my mentors said just don't think, Rock. And you'd be better off. In fact, you're, you're your cells in your body are eavesdropping on your thoughts all the time. 
And that's why we sell, say that, you know, if it, you come to an event like this, and let's say I share some things, things with you, and you're like, yeah, that makes sense. That's a pretty cool idea. I'm going to go home, and I'm going to meditate, or I'm going to, you know, if I can't, I must. That's pretty cool. Or, you know what, say yes to things. And you have it at an intellectual level. At what level? Intellectual. Oh, the energy's going already. Okay, let's try that again. At what level? Intellectual. Thank you, at an intellectual level. Listen, by the way, by the, the reason we do that is because we want to drive it into your cells. If you're sitting here and you go, you know, intellectual, by the time you go for your coffee break, it's gone. But if you're like, intellectual baby, your cells are going, okay, that must be important, right? So you have to find a way to drive things into your system and change the operation manual. Otherwise, you'll just be the same. You might as well leave now, go home, and start taking some action. So for the rest of the day, I'm going to challenge you to challenge yourself to bring it, right? And if not for yourself, because I know you'll do more for other people, be the most energetic person in your row. And then look down the rest of the row and say, come on, guys. Right? And get the most out of today. Because today you have a lineup of unbelievable speakers that have come here to rock your world and give you some tidbits. But if it doesn't go in at a cellular level, you'll get it at an intellectual level and it'll be a great idea. It'll be one of those things that you know you should be doing it, but you don't do what you know. Right, exactly. Okay, so we want to get it at a cellular level. Drive it in deep. So let's do this. I'm gonna, I got a bunch of words up here, and let's just for the fun of it, I'm gonna yell them out, and you're gonna tell me green or red. Green is for if you think successful people are more likely to do more of this, right? You overachievers are already reading it. <laughs> see you, getting ready so you won't fail and have pain because you won't know the answer. You see how your freaking mind works? Just be present and look at me. Relax, you'll be safe, right? How do I know all this? Because I got the biggest fear brain going on here, right? So red stands for if you think people that are generally struggling are more apt to do more of this, and green is successful people you think are more apt to generally do this. Does that make sense? Yes. Are you with me? Yes. Are you ready? Yes. Thank you. All right, giving back, red or green? Green. Okay, going to seminars. Overindulging. Good one. Mastermining. Green. Exercise. Green. Meditation. Green. Watching lots of TV. Red. Hmm. Affirmations. Green. Prayer. Green. Reading magazines like people and all that sort of thing. Red. Not that there's anything wrong with that. Okay. Complaining, Red. criticizing, Red. worrying, Red. reading, Red. CDs, listening to CDs. Green. Well, empowering, inspirational, motivational CDs, thank you. Gossip, Red. listening to the radio instead of listening to CDs. Red. Visualization, Green. and coaching. So, as simple and as silly as this seems, my experience of after analyzing many successful people over the years, you talk to them and they'll say, you know what, I don't listen to the radio in my car anymore. I pop in CDs on this person or that person or this person. And they start to infuse themselves because garbage in, garbage out, yes? yes? But if you start to put in inspirational things, how many of you have listened to some things and you've gotten, you like you're sitting there and you start to get excited, yes? And then you listen to that radio, and okay, and it's this, and it's gossip, and it's that, and you just, maybe you're mildly amused, but you're not really doing it. You're just kind of staying sideways. So if you really just want to start to have some shifts, look at some of these, jot some of them down, and say, you know what, maybe I'm going to make a shift in that area. I'm going to start listening to some more inspirational CDs, or I'm going to meditate. I'm going to do that. I'm going to take on a 21-day challenge, or affirmations. So for instance, I have, I'm gifted, guided, grateful, powerful, passionate, playful, sexy, sensual, sensitive, and blessed. Boom! Right? Say that again. Gifted, guided, grateful. Oh, you can say it if you want. Okay. Powerful, passionate, playful. Sexy, sensual, sensitive. And blessed. 
So the reason I have 10 of them is because I work out in the gym a lot, and every time I work out, instead of going 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 10, I go, I'm gifted, guided, grateful, powerful, passionate, playful, sexy, sensual, sensitive, and blessed, right? And I'm drilling that into the cells of my body and reminding them that I am blessed. We are all blessed here. We live in the greatest part of the world with so many opportunities, and people are dying to have the problems we have, yes? Yet we find a way to feel sometimes uninspired and disempowered. So, help me out with a couple of ahas from today. What did you pull from what we shared today? A couple of ahas. Yes. Yes, thank you. Do what is difficult and life will be easy. Remember the little girls? Do what is easy and life will be difficult. Thank you. What's great about this? What's great about this? Ask yourself a quality question. Do the things successful people do. Do the things successful people do. Thank you. The only meaning something has is the meaning that I decide to give to it. Yes. The only meaning something has is the meaning that I decide to give to it. Do what I fear. Take action and it will disappear. Do what I fear. Take action and it will disappear. Focus on the why, not the how. Focus on the why, not the how. You guys are awesome. A couple more. Yes. How you do things is none of your freaking business. What else? Everything happens for me, not to me. Everything happens for me, not to me. Yes. Say yes before your brain says no. Say yes before your brain says no. You guys are awesome. Yes. You can have a great story or you can be a great story. You can have a great story or you can be a great story. Change your environment. Change your environment. Extremely important. Yes. If I can't, I must. Everybody say that. If I can't, I must. Which really means that when your brain is trying to protect you from potential pain, you're going to take action anyway. Yes? And I'm going to challenge you all day long to do that. If, you, if the other speakers want you to participate, to shout out answers, to stand up, to share, to run across the room and meet somebody else, and your brain goes, oh, I don't really feel like it. I'm going to meet some stranger, right? I don't want to get up. I'm comfortable here. I really have to go pee right? Hold back on that, jump up, and just take it on. Let's have this be the most rockingest, absolute greatest seminar, because you are here, right? Right. And while you're here, you might as well live a legendary day, because we don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. And this is Keller Williams, the freaking greatest real estate company on the planet, yes? yes. Let me hear it, yes? yes? Are you ready to have an amazing day? Yes. yes. Oh, I don't believe you. Come on, are you ready to have an amazing day? Yes! Please stand up. Say yes. Yes! Say yes. Yes! Say yes. Yes! I can't hear you. Say yes. Yes! 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 Now give somebody a high five and see you. You are freaking awesome!